Well, uh, welcome back to our next episode of Catechism in the Car. Today we are looking at the introduction to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God t tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father and that we are his true children so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children ask their dear father. So in the beginning of the Lord's Prayer here, we're introduced to this idea that God is our father and that we are his true children. So that begs the question, how can we call God our father? Well, we can call God our father because he has created us and he has also adopted us into his family. He's adopted us into his family through the waters of holy baptism. And as we're looking at the, the scriptures, we hear this from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So because we've been adopted into God's family through Christ, we get the wonderful privilege of calling God our Father. That word Abba there, uh, it actually means Daddy. So we get to call the God of all creation our daddy, our dad, our father. This is really cool stuff. And notice in this prayer, we pray our father. Prayer is a community action. It's something that we do together as God's people. We don't pray my father who is in heaven, even though we could pray that prayer. But no, the, the prayer that Jesus gives us is our Father. He makes us a part of the community of saints that we all, as God's children, get the privilege of calling God our Father. And then Luther instructs us to pray this prayer with boldness and confidence, like a child asking their parent for something. So my son, Ash, he will come up to me all the time and say, Daddy, can I have some candy, please? And he asks it with all boldness and confidence. It doesn't matter whether or not he's finished his dinner. It doesn't matter whether or not he's done his chores or not. It doesn't really matter even if he's been good or not. He still comes up and he still asks with the same boldness and confidence, Daddy, can I have some chocolate, please? And... As we pray the Our Father, we're really coming before our God with that same boldness and confidence that a, a child has. That we pray for what we need, we pray for the needs of others as well, but we do it with boldness and confidence, not out of fear or trepidation, but we approach God with confidence because He has promised to hear our prayers. Doesn't mean He's always going to answer them the way we want Him to, but He will answer our prayers. In fact, as we look at the catechism again here, it talks about this boldness and confidence, and it uses a text from John chapter 14. Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So as we pray this prayer, we ask things to be done in Jesus' name. Really, we I always end my prayers all that, that way, of praying in Jesus' name, amen. Now, when we pray something in Jesus' name, we're really praying for it according to his will. Uh, we're not praying things for us to selfishly kind of get things so we can hoard them for ourselves. You know, we can't say, uh, Lord God, give me a Ferrari in Jesus' name. Like that, I hate to tell you, Jesus doesn't really care whether or not you have a Ferrari. Uh, but when we pray for something in Jesus' name, 
we're praying that we would have Jesus will done in our own lives. Which kind of brings us to another important topic about prayer. Just who do we pray to? Well, we pray to the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you can address any prayer to the Father or to the Son or the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter who you pray to in that respect. You can pray directly to Jesus. You don't have to do uh, as the Catholics do and have to go through Mary or some of the other saints to reach Jesus. You can pray to Jesus directly. You can pray to the Father directly. You can pray to the Holy Spirit directly directly. This is prayer. This is our conversation with God. We can pray to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit whenever we want and kind of whatever needs we might have. So there's a, a couple of things that we don't pray to. We don't pray to idols. We don't pray to our ancestors, those who have gone before us. Um, there's a lot of religions out there that will have like ancestor worship and praying to uh, family members who are long dead, that that's part of their religion and it's just nowhere condoned in scripture at all. So don't, don't do that. Uh, we also don't pray to the saints. So the Catholics will pray to Mary or St. George or whatever saint they need to kind of get that help from. Um, you are already a saint. You are a saint in the waters of holy baptism. You don't need to go to a saint to pray because you already are a saint. You are a saint in the waters of baptism, which Christ has done for your sake. So you don't need to pray to a saint to pray to God for you. You just go directly to God. Um, we also don't pray to the angels. Uh, this happens in the book of Revelation where John will be so amazed by what he sees that he falls down and tries to worship the angel and the angel's like, no, don't, you know, we don't do that here. Um, you know, you just pray directly to God. We don't pray to anything else that God has created. We just pray to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then the question I get kind of asked most often is, Pastor, there's times where I just, I don't know what to pray for, or I don't know how to pray. How, how do I pray when I just can't find the words? And there's some really great uh, comfort in the, the scriptures here about those times. So we pray enabled by the Holy Spirit. So this is from Romans 8, uh, 26. St. Paul writes, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we ought to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So if we ever have those times in our lives where we just can't think of the right words to say, or we just can't quite piece a prayer together, know that the Holy Spirit is actually praying for you during those times, that the Spirit intercedes for you with the Father on your behalf that the Holy Spirit actually prays to God the Father for you. Like, that's really cool. You have God praying to God for you. That's awesome. This is really, really cool stuff that God does for us. When we have those times when we just don't know what to say or how to say it, that the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That in those times of anguish or sorrow or sadness in our life when we just don't know what to say, the Spirit prays for us, which is an awesome comfort and hope. Now, last time as I talked about the, the Lord's Prayer, I believe I mentioned that uh, Divine Service Setting 5 in our hymnal in the Lutheran Service Book, it actually takes the Lord's Prayer and it breaks it up into the individual petitions and has larger prayers that go with that. So I want to, for this series use those prayers as kind of our, our closing prayer for the day. So this actually goes with the Our Father and the Hallowed Be Thy Name that we'll look at next week. But let's pray. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name may be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, 
whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, that ends our episode for today. Uh, next time, we'll be looking at the first petition of the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed Be Thy Name. Until then, have a great day and God bless. Bye.